welcome back to Hermits, Hounds, and Horses. If you're new here, make sure that you subscribe to see all of my animal-related videos. So the topic for today's video is going to be hermit crab shells. And I get asked about shells all the time. It's one of my most frequently asked questions. And people ask, where do you buy your shells? What kind of shells do hermit crabs need? Why won't my crabs change their shells? And so my goal in this video is to answer all of those questions, so stay tuned, we're gonna jump right into it. So first of all, why are shells important for hermit crabs? Like, why do they wear them? Other types of crabs often don't wear shells at all, so why do hermit crabs need them? Hermit crabs need shells because their bodies are made up of two different parts. So their front half, which has their legs, their claws, their eyes, the front part of their body is very hard. It has a hard exoskeleton that protects them. However, their back half, their abdomen, is much softer and that area could be easily damaged. So they need to protect that by carrying a shell. So although they're called land hermit crabs, they actually have modified gills. So they breathe through gills instead of lungs. They need a lot of moisture and the shell helps to hold that moisture in. That's also why your tank needs to be humid. So between using their shells for protection and using their shells to hold moisture, shells are super important for hermit crabs and the majority of crabs will not survive more than 72 hours without wearing a shell. So shells are super important for your hermit crabs. First of all, by now the majority of people know that painted shells are really bad for hermit crabs. They're often sold this way at pet stores and boardwalks to try to entice people into buying them. They want little kids to like the crab with the green Spider-Man shell and buy that one. It's just a way of marketing them so that pet stores can get more money. Unfortunately, they try to get people to buy them just based off their colorful shells and not really think about the animal that's living in that shell. Paints and shells have been known to chip and peel off. The hermit crabs will often eat the paints as it peels and chips, and the paint can be toxic to them. It contains lead, mercury, all kinds of toxins and chemicals that hermit crabs should not be eating. There have also been cases where hermit crabs have actually been painted into their shells where they're put into the shell when the paint is still wet and then they're stuck in that painted shell forever, which can also kill them. Painted shells are also very inhumane. All hermit crabs are taken from the wild and in the wild they have unnatural shells that they found along the beach. But because the pet stores want to have them in the painted shells to sell them quickly and for more money, they will force them into the painted shells. So the way they do that is they put them in a machine and they crush the shell that they're in and then put them in a container with a bunch of painted shells. So the crab only has the option of going into a painted shell. This is very, very inhumane, cruel, and stressful, as I'm sure you can imagine. So painted shells are a big, big no. You definitely do not want to have those for your hermit crabs. One of the main questions I get asked a lot is where do I buy my hermit crab shells? I have a couple of really, really nice ones and people want to know where I get them. Unfortunately, the options that I have available are not available for everyone else. I live in Florida near a bunch of beaches and I'm able to travel to local stores and find shells that were found locally. So that's a great option for me. It's usually very cheaper, but I can't really recommend that to people that live in places like Kansas or Minnesota where there are no beaches. However, if you look in the description of this video, I'll be putting a couple different links as to where you can buy shells from. I'll also leave some links for some other sites that tell you about sizing and different types of shells so that you guys can do some of your own research and see what you can find. So the majority of people end up buying their shells online because the ones that pet stores use either are not correct for hermit crabs or they're painted. Pet stores usually don't sell good shells for hermit crabs. Every now and then you can find them, but it's not normally something they will sell. The way you figure out what size shell your hermit crab needs is to actually measure their current shell. So if you hold them up and you measure the opening for the widest part across, and then you add 1 an inch to that, and that's the size shell that you should buy. 
usually. Hermit crabs can be funny animals. We as people can't always predict what type of shells they will like. Sometimes it doesn't make sense the ones that they choose. Sometimes they pick ones that we would think really wouldn't work for them, or we provide them with the best shells ever and they don't like any of them. Some crabs prefer to wear shells that are way too big and other ones wear ones that are a little bit too small. So it really depends on the individual crab and their individual preference. So it's always good to have a lot of extra shells. I would say at least five extra shells per crab and make them all a little bit different to see what your hermit crab likes. So two important things before we talk about the specific kinds of shells. Firstly, I'm not going to refer to these shells by their real scientific names. If you care to know the specific types of shells, I will be leaving lots of links down below where you can go and see all the different kinds of shells. Secondly, the types of shells that hermit crabs prefer depend on their species. So if you are unsure what species of hermit crab that you have, I highly recommend that you go and watch my video all about the different kinds of hermit crabs. And once you are done with that and you know what species you have, come back and finish this video. So let's start with the purple pincher. These are the most common species of hermit crab in North America. They generally prefer turbo shells and ones with round openings because that is the shape of their abdomen. To give a few examples of turbos, there are tapestry turbos, striped turbos, green turbos, many different kinds of turbos and all of these are good options for purple pinchers. Indian top shells, which are normally black and white, are commonly used by purple pinchers. They don't normally prefer them as much as the turbo shells. They are a bit heavier, but I have one hermit crab where she loves Indian top shells and she refuses to wear anything but them. So it really does depend on the individual crab. Again, this is another type of shell that purple pinchers will wear, but less commonly. They are a bit heavier like the Indian top shells and it really depends on the specific crab wanting to wear a heavier shell. Lastly, the candy snail shell. They have been used by purple pinchers, but it's usually not very common. It's usually not preferred, and normally you will only see very small crabs wearing these shells. The same goes for Indonesian crabs, ruggies, and strawberries. They all have very similar preferences to purple pinchers. They want shells that have round openings, which are normally turbo shells. Ecuadorian crabs generally prefer shells that are shorter. They don't like having a lot of long pieces sticking out, which can slow them down. And they usually like shells that have a D-shaped opening. So similar to the purple pinchers, but just flatter. So an example of a shell with a D-shaped opening would be the Babylonia shell. They will also use shark eye shells, and you can see that this one here has a hole in it, so a hermit crab probably would not live in this one. They will also wear some of the more classical shells, I'll say, the ones you typically think of a hermit crab wearing, such as the king crown or the Florida crown. Blueberry crabs will normally pick the same types of shells as purple pinchers and Ecuadorian crabs. They will use ones that have round openings as well as D-shaped openings. Lastly, the viola crabs prefer long shells with oval-like openings. Some examples of these types of shells would be the apple murex and the pink murex. Now we're going to look at a couple different types of shells that hermit crabs usually do not prefer and will not wear. There are cases of hermit crabs wearing these shells, but usually they will not pick these over the more ideal options. The African turbo, although a very pretty shell, is not very popular with hermit crabs. The reason being is that it has a very wide opening, but the further back in the shell you go, the thinner it gets, so it doesn't really fit a hermit crab's body well. Cone shells are not preferred by hermit crabs simply because the spiral goes upwards instead of to the side, meaning that when carrying this shell, the hermit crab's body has to point upwards. So it's at a really awkward angle for them, so they don't tend to prefer this shell. Olive shells are again a very pretty shell, one that we would like our hermit crabs to wear, but again, they don't fit in it well and they don't prefer this type. Another shell that is unpopular with hermit crabs is the lightning whelk. And these shells actually spiral the opposite way, 
meaning that they bend in the opposite direction of the hermit crab's abdomen. The very first shell that a hermit crab takes actually determines the shape that their abdomen will curl. Although uncommon, some hermit crabs will start with their first shell being something like a lightning whelk where it goes in the opposite direction and then they will need to use shells like that for the rest of their life. In general, hermit crabs will not use shells that have very wide openings and very little internal shell space, such as this one here, and they generally do not prefer shells that have very long pointy areas needlessly sticking out of them that serve as an obstacle getting in their way of movement. There can be a couple different reasons that crabs won't change shells, one being that they're the incorrect size or the incorrect type, but if you have the right shells and they are the right size and your crabs still aren't changing, I do have a couple of tips to help them to switch. One would be to boil the shells in salt water. So boiling the shells when you first get them is a good habit anyway because it helps to sterilize them, make sure that they're completely clean before adding them into your crab habitat. But adding in the salt water actually helps to make it more enticing for the hermit crabs. They can smell the salt on it and it draws them to it. So then they're more likely to change. Sometimes after you boil the shells, they appear more dull and less colorful. One thing that you can do is polish them with olive oil. So you just take a little dab of olive oil and you rub it all around the shell and that makes it nice and polished. This doesn't really do anything to help draw the crab into the shell more, but it can help you as the owner to have more of a visual appeal. And I personally think that natural shells are way more beautiful than any of the painted ones. Another thing you can do to entice your crabs to change their shells is to place them with the opening facing upward. This helps the crabs realize that it's actually a shell in front of them and not just something like a rock. I've also noticed in my own crab keeping that my crabs are more likely to change into a different shell if the shells are kept on the ground rather than up in a shell shop. I'm not sure why this is exactly. I guess in the wild they would find the shells on the ground and not up high. The one downside of keeping your shells on the ground is that the crabs will get them dirty and they will bury them sometimes, which is why people keep them in shell shops just to keep them cleaner. But if you're really looking for your crab to change shells, I would definitely put it down on the ground with the opening facing up. Alright guys, that's it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you were able to learn something from it. If you did enjoy it, if you liked it, then make sure that you leave a like and make sure you're subscribed to see more hermit crab videos just like this one. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!